The dark side of opium. It's no secret that the opium. What are they gonna say? It's gonna be some like conspiracy theory, like Cardi Locke destroy lonely Ken Carson and homicide gang in the closet of the basement, forcing them to drink each other's mother's milk, and that's why they're all successful artists because they sold their souls and buttholes. Label ran by none other than Playboy Cardi is tearing up the un. And by the way. We're going to go back to the late night streams. The reason that we're streaming during the day is because I'm trying to stream before the Super Bowl so that we can talk about what we got to talk about and then go get shwasty at uh, our parties or whatnot. The ground scene at this point in time. At one point, everybody and their mama wanted to be a slave and their mama world soldier. But now everybody and their auntie wants to be opium. I think that's because Slay World wasn't a label. It was just a collective and so you don't just being affiliated with a collective doesn't necessarily mean you're like the biggest artist there was summers and autumn and so when you're with opium of course you're going to be want to be a, you're going to want to be associated with cardi who's a public figure mainstream artist so why it just, this doesn't make sense of course opium over slay world <laughs> Whose show is this? Never going to a homicide? Oh my god. Bro, I would look so weird at that. I'm like, double these kids' age. It's been a long two years coming for this Atlanta based underground label. We know of Ken Carson, we know of Destroy Lonely, and now there is two newcomers, the Homicide Gang. They just released their project a few weeks ago, and their sound is very similar to that of Playboy Cardi when it comes to the ad libs and things. And yeah, the ad libs and beat selection of that nature. One thing is for sure with this opium label this is a strictly mosh pit, rage induced type of sound. This is not your lyrical. Actually, I think Destroy Lonely gets you know a couple songs on each project. Actually, we've only gotten one, right? But so no stylus. He got a couple rage songs on there, but a lot of it was more slow, chill. That's why I think Destroy Lonely has the most longevity in the album or in the pro in the opium label because he does something different than Cardi. Type of rap. This is not no J. Cole. I'm not 32, bruh. You kidding me? I'm 26. Chill out with that. YBN Corday, none of that, okay? This is straight rage and get hype type of music. Straight bangers for the young kids. But what if I told you this opium label has a deep, dark secret that nobody seems to be paying attention oh, to? Oh, shit! He's gonna start referencing what academics said way back in the day. It's like, there's a rumor that there's a mainstream artist right now that got sodomized by a label executive to be famous and it was cardi and so then he by the transitive property had to do that to his artists as well for them to exchange fame and clout all right for me to actually get you guys to understand this whole entire video sodomize means put it in your ass <laughs> Anal. I'm gonna have to break this down as simple as possible, all right? So it all starts with this guy right here. I think you guys know who this is. But for the people that are just dumb, this is Cardi, okay? This is Playboy Cardi, man. This is where the opium label begins and pretty much where it ends. But before we get into opium, let's talk about Cardi, okay? Now, pretty much, y'all should already know Cardi is an underground legend. But you guys know what I mean when I say that. We all know about Cardi, bro. He grinded from like 2014 or something to where he's at right now. Now, Playboy Cardi's come up is still very questionable. Nobody quite knows exactly how or why he has such a crazy fan base. Some would say it's because of his simplistic rap flow and his beat selection, but others would say it's because of his mysteriousness and the fact that he doesn't drop as often as... I'd say it's a combination of like everything. It's the... It's the fashion sense that's super different. Like, he's just cool, right? Or he, People want to be him. They want to have his fashion sense. 
probably the simplistic nature of his music too so it probably appeals to uh and it's very niche so it appeals to a strict group where everybody who likes cardi basically loves him like they're his favorite artists you either love him or you hate his music that's what it is and the most polarizing people have the biggest cult fan bases take like trump or like andrew tate uh also what else yeah probably the mysteriousness because the fans have to stick together to before the album releases so that they can hold off because they're sitting there i don't know waiting for like three years every project but yeah i think he's just if you're if you're cool you could basically do anything you can drop every every couple of months and it would still have the same effect in my opinion actually no because Cardi doesn't drop every two or three years, that's probably the reason. A lot of mainstream artists out there. All right, now that we got Cardi's bio pretty much out the way, let's talk about... Oh, also I want to say, he had all the major co-signs at the time. He had ASAP, which was huge at the time, who he signed to, ASAP Ugg. He had Ian Connor, who was huge at the time, also had a cult-like fan base in the fashion industry. So that, that again, one art form, fashion, streetwear, that kind of boosted cardi's career he helped boosted uh broke boy as well so yeah it's just a bunch of cults the asap mob the pre-social media and then into the social media hype whole lot of red okay now whole lot of red dropped december 25th christmas day 2020 now leading up to this album release we saw a different side of cardi all year round i'm talking from when he dropped at me in april of 2020 all the way until the end of the year it was very clear that this was no longer cash cardi from 2017. not only was he dressing different more flamboyant more feminine attire if you want to say that he's gonna say it he's gonna say it. he got he got fucked in the ass he also had red dreadlocks and very often you would see Cardi promoting demonic symbolism in his Instagram photos. I'm talking upside down crosses. I'm talking pentagrams. Not to because he's a vampire, which is synonymous with the devil. I think the average person out there, this might not offend them, but to a lot of people, it did. A whole bunch of people were starting to speculate that Cardi had sold his soul for this level of fame. He sold his ass soul. His asshole. And to be honest, they were right. Y'all remember when Lil Uzi Vert came on the scene with a whole bunch of upside down crosses on his chain? A lot of people were up in arms about that back in 2017. But it appears to me that the general public has been desensitized to this type of imagery. Now a lot of y'all are young, so you might not know exactly what it takes to become a huge celebrity and rapper and just world famous in general. I mean, just ask Cardi's hairstylist who exposed him about a year ago. Fucking the one dude off. Then he sucked the other dude off. Then he sucked the other dude off. Now they Vaseline him up and pop him in his ass. Cardi has been taking dick since before he left Georgia to begin with. The same reason dude dropped Uno and the rest of them so-called family shit. I thought things was different nowadays, but I ronnie lee was just petty because she got dropped because she kept giving out false information about a whole lot of red and he cardi didn't want it to look corny uh but fame come with a cost and really don't sin yeah he cardi ain't actually gay bro he might have he might have done dated but i i would i would assume that he probably didn't like it i don't know and you're probably saying that's bullshit that's the way that shit goes and then what they do they videotape the shit why 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 would they want to videotape that y'all say to sell it later now to keep your mouth closed now i'm not trying to make this whole video bashing on cardi or anything like that i'm just here to expose the truth okay whether you believe it or not that cardi sold his soul i don't really want to get into that right now i could make a whole nother video selling your soul is a metaphor they don't actually sell their soul to the devil for fame bro i got a sigil on my arm i'm not famous yet i thought that was the main way to sell it yo if y'all want me to but let's get back to it okay 
So Playboy Cardi is signed to Interscope Records. Now, if you don't know what Interscope Records is. Selling your soul for the chat out there. It's basically like losing creative control or conforming to like less authentic music or art to yourself. So like you'll see artists selling their soul, meaning they kind of gave up control to the label because the label gives you $2 million. So now you kind of have to listen to what they say. You sold their soul or you sold your soul. Um, and that goes with like what type of music that you can drop, what you can wear, uh, you know, the whole marketing campaigns. They sometimes control your social media a lot of times, actually. So you sell your soul that way. There's no you're not you're not you, you don't actually have a contract with Satan himself. Is then you just got to be done, bro. Interscope Records is probably one of the biggest labels in America, maybe even in the world. I'm not quite sure. But they got a lot of big names signed to Interscope. Now, every upcoming young artist out there, even if you're a band lab rapper, you should know that if you deal with a record label, they got a lot of funny business going on because the music industry is, quite frankly, a very shady business. I don't want to get into the details, but these people don't care about the artists for real. They care about their money. They care about selling. It's a business, though, man. Exactly. That's the only reason they're there. Because, like, think about it. The executives, they're not just all powerful. They have shareholders, people who own the actual company. The CEO does not own the company. Their main interest or, or duty is to make the shareholders happy, meaning make them money or make their share price uh, higher. How do they do that? Get your stream numbers up. Sell more tickets to shows. Sell more merch. It's like it's a business that they're not the CEOs are not communicating with the artists uh, more so the managers are there to keep them happy so that they continue the creative process. But the C yeah, the, the executives like they, they don't have time to make sure the artists are happy selling records. Basically, that's what a record label is for. And the business. same rules apply for Playboy Cardi. Now that we've established that he is signed to Interscope Records, you guys should know he it's like your your landlord. If y'all have a, a crib your landlord don't give a shit about what you're you know how you're doing how, how your relationship is with your mom or your girl they're like yo just give me the bread dog i don't care <laughs> that's exactly what it is he is a product of that Business. label do you really think that they're just not gonna control him if they want to sell records they know how big his fan base is do you really believe for a second that playboy cardi came up with the vampire aesthetic by himself yes he's been saying it since 2017 in a fader interview where and even asap bari confirmed that in the recent our generation music interview that he's always been a rock star type uh he likes vampire movies it's it's it's, it's recorded in a bunch of interviews you guys really believe that for a second hey if you guys still do believe that i'm gonna show you a clip from a couple years back with young thug meeting with his record label executives and this is just how it goes bro this is how these meetings low-key play out i understand that you're shy and you don't like doing it but the fact of the matter is your fans actually want to hear from you yeah but we're, we're not going i don't to need to yeah, we do because we still want him to be like have a mystique about him. Yes. Yeah. I just don't want him to be like. Well, I don't want everybody just to know. We we. Oh, we know. No, no. You're going to keep them guessing, but we're going to take advantage of the fact that they have huge listenership, and we're going to communicate to them that Slime Season yes, Three is about to come, and then High Tunes is about to come. This year I want ten number one singles. Ten. If you don't freestyle and you actually work on the singles and record great choruses and develop your songs, yes, you you just record so many songs and leave them like little orphans out there, okay? Yeah. You have to come back to them no, I and, don't. yes, you no. do. Yeah, no, you got, the credits come back to them. So that's basically, that was just the, the label executive being like, yo, you can't just do whatever, whatever you want because we just gave you three mil. Come on, you gotta be smart here. These labels aren't just gonna give you money and then expect, just think that you can do whatever you want. Imagine someone gives you three mil, the bank, to go buy a house, a mortgage, 
and then you you're just like oh yeah i'm not gonna pay rent the bank's gonna be like okay we're gonna repossess the house and just take the money that you've given us so far and it, and legally that ain't your house anymore basically just an example that was young thug meeting with executive named liar cohen i don't know if you guys know who liar cohen is that was Lior cohen yeah he's with 300 entertainment i believe but he was i believe the head of 300 entertainment back in the day and all that other good stuff but basically man these artists don't have a say in their image so if cardi is yes they do bruh he was just letting young thug know like you gotta actually drop music not just record a bunch of songs and then not release it and not say anything to your fans because right now we're not making any bread off of the music and recording budget that you're using you got to use social media in some way now if you're cardi though the label's probably like yeah you do your thing because every project you give us we're making like 10 mil from so keep doing you if you're making money the label will tell you they will give you all the freedom in the world has to look like and dress like a vampire or look like and dress like a clown like a scary clown he's dissing the labels meanwhile he's dissing cardi and thinking that he's like helping like cardi it's okay you can you can stop being a vampire i think cardi likes being a vamp he probably the vamp suit does not come off during sex no no way with face paint on his face that's what he has to do that's what he has to do bro it's all about selling records it's all about publicity in this record label music industry business all right now i'm kind of going off track off topic i'm trying to get y'all boys to realize something okay i'm basically just trying to show y'all bro cardi is a product of this record label and if you guys don't know interscope interscope is probably one of the most demonic satanic music record labels in the freaking country in the world maybe okay but again i don't really want to get into it too much but basically man back to opium now opium i think the reason that a lot of rappers and artists and just entertainment industry people allude to illuminati satanic rituals and whatnot is it, it probably does go on but also it's because it's so opposite and so controversial that it brings attention that's the easiest way to get some eyeballs like claim that you sold your soul because everybody gets all freaked out like oh what that it's real i thought it was fake you know whereas if you say like oh yeah i i talked to god today i prayed they're gonna be like shut the fuck up it is playboy cardi's it's probably it's a sub label i feel like it's like a smaller label under interscope which is playboy cardi's label so when it comes to opium the same things that playboy cardi is asked to do he is going to ask his signees like ken carson these i got fucked in the ass so you're going to as well by me now pull down your pants boy lonely and homicide gang to do as well this includes rocking an upside down cross chain you got i know you guys see the upside down okay. cross chain yeah i do think opium label is influenced by cardi they probably rock the same type of clothes just because it it's the easiest fan base to tap into if you're signed to that label like why not that's literally like zero marketing just buy a fake uh cubic zirconium upside down cross chain instant 10k followers first instagram posts Chain everywhere on these dudes. They even rapping it in their lyrics. To summarize the rest of this video, I just want to say something, okay? I know not everybody believes in the Bible. I know that everybody believes in God, Jesus, anything of that nature. But when your favorite artists are out here rocking upside down crosses with pentagrams and all other types of demonic imagery is it safe to say that these guys don't believe in jesus is that what we're saying if they didn't believe in god the devil anything of that nature why would they even be entertaining this stuff why would cardi be out here with horns on his head in a life because that's his brand 
That's why it's cool, because most rappers are just regular street dudes, whereas back in the day, we had real artists that would turn into a whole character and persona when they release their music that matches it. Performance. If you don't believe in this stuff, why is your whole merch designed and tailored around the whole aesthetic of God, Jesus, the devil? Think about it, y'all. Think about it for a second, bro. Because the Bible is the most widely uh, circulated book in history. So when you go against it with satanic imagery, you're basically getting, again, it's the most controversial thing to go, to go against God and go against the Bible. So it gets the most attention. It's the most polarizing aesthetic. I mean, I don't believe in freaking Harry Potter. You don't you don't see me dissing Harry Potter for no reason. You feel me? If you don't believe in something, you don't even entertain it, bro. That's all that's all I know in my personal, you know, experience. If I don't believe in something, why would I even You're saying it's the Quran? Huh. When you're right, you're right, man. The Bible is the best-selling book of all time. Sorry. And put it in front of people's face. My thing is, I know Cardi knows about God, the devil, and all that other stuff. I know he does because he signed to one of the most wickedest record labels out there, bro. And this opium label is underneath Cardi. Basically underneath Interscope. It goes Interscope, Cardi, then opium label. So they're pushing the same values, y'all. And to think for a second that this doesn't have any importance in your life is actually sad because, bro, it's all in your face, bro. Why is this demonic imagery all in your face? It's because this stuff is very important in your life. They don't want to tell you that there's an afterlife after this life. They don't want to tell you that turning up and bumping that new Destroy Lonely is not going to get you into heaven. They don't want to tell you this stuff. Oh my but guess God. what, man? Tindious Underground is here to tell y'all, man. So that has been the dark side of the opium label. Everybody wants to be opium gang. Everybody wants to be, you know what I'm saying, 1017 Alex. Everybody acts like listening to Destroy Lonely Music or Cardi Music is going to take you to hell. All right. You know how many sins you probably commit every single day? Why don't you just add a couple on every day with listening to some satanic music real quick? And then you can for get forgiven by, uh, I don't know much. I'm not very religious, but like what? You confess your sins every at, at church every weekend? So you can just go do that. Like, yeah, I listen to Destroy Lonely uh, Preacher or Father. And then it's, con it's confessed, it's forgiven, and you're good. Drake the Jesus died for you to listen to Destroy Lonely. Oh, they want to rock their Rick Owens. But where will all that go when you're dead? Where will all that go when you're not in the presence of God in the afterlife? Oh my God. Just something for you guys to think about, man. Anyways, though, I'm out. Peace. Oh my God. Making you think. You're going to hell just from listening to Cardi's music. He said none of it about Uzi or Trippy. I feel like Trippy's a little bit more light. Uzi too, but Uzi, yeah, he was on the Upside Down Crosses and Devil persona before Cardi, or at least like publicly. So yeah, I get your point.